inferior epigastric vessel this is the right side or for the left side so first think about where is the rectus abdominis muscle itself is here always start from the rectus abdominis muscle to understand when they give you any crop picture so this is the rectus abdominis muscle so that's why this is the midline so this is actually in the left side photograph have been given so this is the inferior epigastric vessel and this vessel is especially necessary to distinguish between the direct inguinal hernia and indirect inguinal hernia mm -hmm. three star importance the question will become in a different various way they give you a scenario in a di direct hernia direct in hernia from here that's the indirect that's from the indirect hernia occur. They will give you a question is a lot of it. And old days that comes to you in a direct inguinal hernia, you do the surgery and during operation, you have found and vessel where it is situated. It's situated on the lateral side of the hernia. And they give you another question, say young child comes with you and you diagnose inguinal scrotal swelling. So whenever they give you in inguinal scrotal swelling, it's most of the time young age, it is indirect inguinal hernia. So where would be the vessel situated it would be medial to it or they give you any hernia uh, scenario they do not give you any clear cut demarcations point is written on the questions the surgeon is very confused while opening the surgery which vessel gives you to identify uh, differentiating from the direct and inguinal hernia so still the questions would be inferior epigastric artery so from from here this question will be asked in the Hasselbeck triangle so Hasselbeck triangle the boundary border so is definitely can be seen the form in the medial side is uh, the lateral border of the rectus muscles in the superior lateral the inferior epigastric vessels and just inferiorly the ligament itself why is important Hasselbeck triangle because it is the weakened part of the abdominal cavity entry abdominal wall that is the direct responsible for direct hernia okay now the transpyloric plane transpyloric questions why actually what the definition of the transpyloric pyloric means is the pylorus this comes from the pylorus part of the stoma so but the definition doesn't mean about any transpyloric the definition is a meat trunk in simple way so the manubri jugular notch and from the simple pubic symphysis so for the pubic symphysis and the jugular sternum if we then imaginary line and make a midpoint of it imaginary horizontal line that's the uh, actually the transpyloric plane and that dissects the pylorus part of the stomach that's why its name itself a transpyloric plane but uh, which structures have been cut through this transpyloric plane that's the important every single contents of transpyloric plane is important we'll go through in the lecture in detail but in short highlighted they will give about the gallbladder uh, the neck of the neck of the pancreas they will try to confuse to you the head the body the tail in lots of way actually it dissects the neck of the pancreas uh, hilum of uh, both kidney are given and the they do not jejunal flexure most of the time is this point they do not jejunal flexure is situated at the lower end of your lecture sheet that's why most of the students get confused with do not forget they do know original flexure is also situated on the transpyloric plane but still it's better to be safe learn each and everything of course put an atlas with you to have a good visualizations what are the other planes here so it dissects the nine coastal nine coastal layer. transpyloric plane dissects the nine coastal ribs so what about uh, imaginary line between the 10 coastal cartilage 10 coastal cartilage so that is the 10 is the lowest uh, coastal cartilage in in the true rib so that's why it's been given not a true ribs i mean uh, in the anterior cage wall that's the lowest point we can achieve so that's why it got the sub coastal plane the two another things is uh, the intertubercular and intercrystal supracrystal and the uh, Inter supertubercular this plane is mainly necessary for the anesthesiologist because it is very much easier way to have their lumbar three lumbar four from the lumbar puncture is much needed most of the question they will ask about either subcostal or the transpyloric transpyloric is the nine ribs and the subcostal is ten ribs